Born and brought up in Australia, Nadia grew up surrounded by nature and influenced by her Australian mother, Diane, an art school teacher who loves planting different kinds of vegetables around the house and a positive force in her life. Nadia's modeling career started when she was only 12 years old when she joined Sydney Modeling Agency with the intention of earning some pocket money. Her rare beauty, a mixture between an Australian mother and a Batak father, made her an instant hit and soon she was being jetted off to Tokyo on modeling assignments. She became a household name when in 1995 she was MTV's Asia Pioneer DJ entertaining over 70 million households across Asia, making her face one of the most well-known in that decade. So this is the lifestyle product. And, I mean, Nadia, you know, shops like this, you mm. know, a health food shop and organic shops is actually, uh, you know, the exception rather than the rule. You actually have to go out of your way to find uh, you know these shops that sell uh, environmentally alternative, products, alternative yeah. products. Now, I see you as someone, and you are well known as um, someone who promotes environmentally uh, and sustainable living. Mm. Uh, I like, I think, uh, somebody describes you as an eco warrior, which I think it's it's a perfect way of, of describing mm. your efforts and, and your interests. And, and the house itself, when you say mm. greenhouse, I'm, I'm just trying to sort of have an image in my mind, especially yeah. in Singapore, a house that is green. W yeah. What does it mean? Does it mean that the, m the materials are environmentally friendly, the energy use and the water? Uh, yeah, we, we very successfully built a passive house. Um, Passive house means very little need for heating or cooling. Mm -hmm. um, from the very beginning, from the, the directional facing of the house uh, to the materials that we chose uh, to put in the house, the technologies that we used, um, even go down to a termite solution mm. that doesn't use uh, poison. Um, our swimming pool is a mineral water swimming pool. Okay, so you can drink from the swimming pool. You could. <laughs> Do you could my cats drink from the swimming pool, which is a good sign. I think if my cat is mm -hmm. happy to drink from the pool, that's a good thing. Um, and, and people joke that we backed up uh, the Evian truck and dumped the water <laughs> in. But no, it's just normal water and it's the filtration system that's different. Mm -hmm. And when you have a house that's built in, uh, in, a, in a city, an urban environment, um, a densely populated urban environment, you don't want to have all of that chlorine mm -hmm. being heated by the sun and off-gassing into the house. Um, so that's that's wow. The, so you really have to think things through. Yeah. But in the long run, is it sort of cheaper in, in terms of Absolutely. paying electricity bills and Absolutely. We have we built. Um, when we built our home, we aimed for it, for it to be a three-generation home, uh, which is then, of course, reducing everyone's carbon footprint. It didn't work out that way, um, but we did build a house that was big enough for the three generations. So we have a three-story house mm -hmm. with uh, six, six to seven bedrooms and a 20-meter swimming pool. And our power bills are the same as a small two-story inter-terrace with no swimming pool and two, two or three bedrooms. So it's been really successful in that sense. Nadia, I'm sure a lot of people, and especially you know, there's more inc increasing awareness about how important it is to take care of the planet, to you know, live uh, an environmentally friendly or green lifestyle. But uh, it, some of the sort of perhaps um, it, it just sounds you know it's hard, and if you have to buy you know things organic, it's expensive, and if you have to build a house, it sounds like a lot of work. Now what's What's your message to just encourage more people to make those kind of choices and stick to those yeah. choices the way that you have done and you are doing and you're thinking ahead for your children and your children's children's future? It's actually really, really simple. You know, um, aside from uh, reducing meat intake, the best thing that you can do is to just consume less. So people say, oh, you know, you know, mm. being organic or being being eco-friendly is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. You because you simply just consume less. You know, when it comes to to the way you live your life, 
the way you consume uh, household products. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even make your own, you know, vinegar, baking soda, salt. All of these things do perfectly well at home, mm -hmm. uh, cleaning the house. Um, and things like uh, even the way I dress, you know, I have a, a very simple staple wardrobe that is, is a classic and it's timeless. You know, I have shoes mm -hmm. that I still have from 10 years ago that I can still wear now because they're classics. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's just about consuming less. It's about uh, making wise uh, decisions and purchases and understanding how products are produced uh, before they get to you, how they get to you, um, the companies that produce them, um, and, and just, just, just being wiser. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're doing, educating people mm -hmm. on, for example, you know, that if you buy ivory products, mm -hmm. elephants die yeah. in order to, uh, for the ivory to, you know, be taken. And the other thing is, you know, there's the shark fins, you know, it's, yes. it, enjoy the shark fins, but remember sharks die and yes. sharks are an in the endangered species. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that uh, you are uh, well known for, and I think it's a great achievement because it's a global initiative, mm -hmm. is you are the global ambassador for Earth Hour. Yes. And it's, it's amazing how that movement has taken off, you know, now mm -hmm. when we have that 60 minutes of the whole world switching electricity off, and mm -hmm. then suddenly it's amazing the amount of energy that we can save. Now, how, how do you feel about being part of that? Um, well, I think Earth Hour. Um, has grown from strength to strength every year and it started with an hour of inspiration and has grown to become this incredible platform for change and people power and it is it is it, it started with earth hour then it became earth hour plus so going beyond the hour mm -hmm. and then the i will if you will campaign kicked in which is basically I'm daring you to, to, to save the planet, or you dare me to save the planet, um, where people give challenges. So I, mm -hmm. I say if 10,000 people give up plastic bags and straws for a year, I'll go diving with mm -hmm. a shark. You know? so, and, it's, and it's, it becomes fun that way. You know, mm -hmm. the, I think the ways and, and, and the messages now in conservation and, and getting people to, to adjust their lifestyle need to be different. Uh, and it needs to have a fresh approach. So what's your, what's your vision of the perfect planet Earth that we'll be very happy to hand over <coughs> to our children. Well, you see, the thing is this. I don't think that we can just say everybody needs to care about the environment. It, it is an unfortunate reality that it's simply not going to be the case. We have poverty and education issues and health issues and population issues uh, that we need to think of. The truth is it's all interconnected, mm -hmm. right? It's really all interconnected. So it, it's, it's not so much that you go out there and say, oh, go green, because that, that it's kind of like a message yeah. from many, many years ago, right? You know, it, the community mm -hmm. needs to be supported. The community needs to be happy. The community needs to be fed and educated. Only then can they think about issues outside themselves. People also need to be uh, uh, supported in, in a manner that they can think about morals and ethics. In countries where corruption is rife and, and is, is the norm, how do you change these mindsets? Mm -hmm. How do you change the bar, you know, what, what sets the bar of, of success? You know, normally people think in terms of economic success. Yeah. Know. But, you know, I think we should go and have a cup of tea somewhere. Sure. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Let's go and look for somewhere. Recently, Nadia is once again pulled back into the modelling world, this time as host of the well-known regional TV show Asia's Next Top Model. I have a feeling, however, that it is her interest in the environment that fuels her passion, and whether creating a line of jewellery with recycled gold, becoming Singapore's ambassador for WWF Earth Hour, and being nominated for the International Green Awards for the Most Responsible International Celebrity 2012 
alongside with other global celebrities such as George Clooney and Penelope Cruz, Nadia is increasingly getting recognized for her green activities and ethical lifestyle. To be sure, there is a lot more depth to her than the familiar and beautiful face that she's generally known by, whether on the screen or in the magazines. So, while we're waiting for our tea, let's yes. continue our little chat now. Echo Warrior, I think. It's a, you know, it's a great um, description of you, but of course, most of the audience would recognize you as a model, you know, supermodel, somebody they see on television, MTV, and lately hosting the Asian Next Top model. I mean, how the, the modeling world, um, which is very much a part of you and your career, how? How does that fit in now that you are hosting the Asian Next Top Model, grooming young would-be models who dream of being somebody like Nadia Hutagalu? How does that feel? Well, when I first was um, offered the role uh, to become the host and judge of Asia's Next Top Model, it was something that I, I really took my time to decide whether I would take it or not. Um, and because whatever I do, I, I sort of commit to things fully, you know, with, with my whole self. Uh, and don't do things halfway. And um, I had to really figure out my motivation for doing it. And, and, and what it is, is that I hope to bring to these girls the best in the industry uh, so that they can set out on the right foot you know, and to have the best start that they can to their careers. Um, it's a lot of pressure. Okay. It's also a very stressful, stressful role because the girls, at least the girls in Cycle One at least, all really wanted to win. Mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of, of, of one or two, but generally they all really wanted to win. So it's very, very emotional mm -hmm. because what you don't see is the tears. Mm. You know, each girl that we send home, she cries, you know, and, it's, it's, and I'm the one sending these girls home. So it was very stressful, you know, uh, far more emotionally uh, um, uh, taxing than I thought a reality show about modeling could be. Now, how do you see yourself? I mean, you've, you've done the modeling and then you've done the TV and the entrepreneurial um, side of you and now there's the the echo warrior, the being an environmental activist. How, how do you see uh, yourself in terms of how you've evolved? Um, I just see that I'm constantly growing, you know, and I think that has a lot to do with my hunger for knowledge. Mm -hmm. and I guess my desire to always be the best version of me. There seems like there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. and, and if I don't do it, you know, what am I going to do? You know, so it just it just seems like the right thing. Okay, I'm just going to keep go, keep on going, keep moving, and, and keep, uh, keep keep bettering myself. Mm. You're a happy person. I am in pursuit of happiness. Um, I think for someone to say that they're truly happy needs to they need to be able to really identify what makes them happy. Is it temporary happiness? Is it a happiness that will actually ultimately cause suffering? You know, um, or is it a happiness that comes from from non-material things that come from within, from doing something meaningful in your life? So that's the happiness that that I'm striving for. Um, Are you getting closer to finding that meaning? I think you're on the right path. I, well, I'm on the path. I hope to be on the path. Um, but, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the practical things that we need to deal with in life that the path gets a bit foggy, right? But it doesn't mean that, we've, <laughs> that we, we, we don't have the intention to be on the path. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm working towards it. You have three children. Yes. Who would you like them to enjoy when they grow up? What kind of people would you like them to be? 
I just want them to be the best versions of themselves. You know, I don't have concrete goals for them. I don't think I say, oh, well, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or a banker. You need to be incredibly successful. You need to be able to do business and be an entrepreneur. No. And I've never been one who's focused on, on grades either. So for me, it's, um, it's, it's important that they have the key things like morals and ethics and compassion and kindness. Uh, and they can be engaged members of, of, of society, you know. Those are the things that are important to me and, and I'll do whatever I can to support that growth in them. And when you look at the past, um, you know, what kind of lessons have you learned? And, um, and how, I mean, how do you see, you know, the the Nadia who was a young girl mm. and then the Nadia now. I think that the lessons that I've learned, there are many, uh, but the greatest lessons that I've learned are to maintain dignity no matter what happens, mm -hmm. to let go of things that are beyond our control. Things are never things are never what they seem. So you can never really judge. And you can have preconceived ideas about things, but they're usually wrong. Mm -hmm. So you just have to go along with things. You know, it's like okay, this is this is how it is today and maybe tomorrow it'll be different and we'll see, we'll take it. Because otherwise life becomes too stressful, you know. Mm -hmm.